Greetings to all of you in social media who have tuned in to this telecast on this great, glorious third Sunday morning of December 2021. We thank you for tuning in. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your prayers. Amen. To the Jesus is the Answer Evangelistic Ministries Church located at 5904 South San Pedro Street right here in the great city of Los Angeles. California. We are located in between Slauson and 59th place on San Pedro. And you're welcome to come to our services. We begin every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. here live in the sanctuary of the Jesus is the Answer Evangelistic Ministries Church. Amen. And we look forward for you to come out and worship and fellowship with us. We have church services every Sunday night as well. Every fourth Sunday night, every fourth Sunday, let me, me clarify, every fourth Sunday night, we have services here at 6.30 p.m. in conjunction with our, amen, our jurisdiction, amen, the following is I follow Christ's jurisdiction, amen, where Bishop uh, Willie J. Baber Jr. is our presiding prelate, and you're more than welcome to come out if you're busy on your, in your church service on Sunday morning, you can come out every fourth Sunday night and worship with us every fourth sunday night amen at 6 30 p.m right here at 5904 south san pedro street in the great city of los angeles california amen 9003 our telephone number is area code 562-208-9149 that's area code 562-208-9149 Amen. If you desire prayer, please call that number, 562-208-9149. If you desire, amen, counseling, if you need to talk with me or someone, please don't hesitate to call that number at the line. Amen. We're not able to pick up. Amen. For whatever reasons, please leave a voice message. Please leave a voice message on our voicemail. Amen. And your contact number. And the reason for your call Amen. And we will definitely call you back. Amen. Amen. We want to reach out to all who needs, amen, someone to reach out to. Praise God. We won't be before you very long uh, this morning. Amen. We uh, thank and praise God for yet, amen, this year as it's getting ready to close out. Amen. 2021 is about to close out. Amen. It's almost over. Praise God, Minister Alton. Good to see you. Amen. And, and we're about to move into 2022 if the Lord says the same. Amen. And we want to make sure that we are well equipped and ready. Because let me tell you something. There's been so much tragedy going on here in 2021. Praise God. And I, and, and I just have this gut feeling that 2022, we're going to see more people dying. I wish I could give you good news. I wish I can reverse all this and, and share that it's going to be a great year. But I, I don't know. If I'm good feeling, I don't think it's going to be a great year for many of us. Amen. We're going to lose loved ones. We're going to lose friends. Praise God uh, to the death angel. But let me tell you something. If you prepare yourself and prepare your life and prepare your heart, Amen. And, and if you know where you're going, you don't mind leaving. Let me repeat that. If you know where you're going, you don't mind leaving. Amen. I don't care what death, uh, amen, angel comes and knock on your door. Amen. You would just lift up both hands and just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. If the Lord decides to take it, 
Amen. All it is is yes, Lord. All it is is yes, Lord. And if you want to hear the Lord say, Thou good and faithful servant, well done. Those are the words we want to hear. That's what we want to hear God said. We want to hear our Father say, Thou good and faithful servant, well done. Enter into your rest. That's what we are living for. That is the ultimate. We're not living for all of this stuff that folks are living for nowadays. They're living for a car that's going to sooner or later get old. Amen. And you're about to buy another car. Amen. Some of us are living for a new house. Amen. And, 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 and the uh, termites and all that kind of stuff can do damage to your house. Praise God. And you got to get do have repairs done on your house. Sometimes your, your plumbing go bad. You got to have new plumbing. But I'm living to live again. I'm living to leave this world. I'm living to leave this, this earth. Praise God. And I'm going to my new home and glory. Amen. Where there is no moth. There is no roaches. There is no, amen, cancer and heart attacks and uh, heart congestive heart failures. And there are no more wars. We don't have to fight no more wars, amen, to keep the freedoms that we have in the United States of America. We don't have to do nothing but just say howdy, howdy, and every day will be Sunday. Praise God. That's what we ought to be living for. And then when the Lord calls and when the Lord says, come, my faithful servant, we ought to just lift up both hands and just say, yes, Lord. Just lift up your hands and just say, yes, Lord. And be ready, amen, with your bags packed. Amen. They used to sing a song, I'm packing and I'm going on home, Minister Southern. I'm packing and I'm ready to go home. Praise God. That's not saying that, amen, I'm suicidal. Praise God. Or, or I'm just, you know, just ready to die. But with God, with call my name. Amen. I want to be ready when he calls. Amen. 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 So again, we welcome you that have tuned in to this telecast this morning, this third Sunday morning of December 2021, the last third Sunday in the year. Praise God. We thank you. And we pray that you would click that like button. Amen. At the bottom of your, your screen, wherever you are looking at us. And amen. If you would subscribe, if you're on uh Amen. Uh, uh, YouTube. Amen. We ask that you would also like and subscribe. Amen. And, and if you are on Facebook, if you're not a friend, just send a friend request. Amen. And we'll be glad to, amen, accept your friend request. And then you can click on, amen, the notification button. Amen. Every time a video is uploaded, amen, you will be, be notified. We don't upload foolishness. People out there fighting. Black folks fighting black folks and all little crazy stuff. We don't upload none of that stuff. Amen. We are loading only those things, amen, that will benefit, amen, your life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So click that like button, amen, and share this video. I pray that you would share. It don't cost you a dime to share this video. Come on. Click the share button and share this video with somebody, amen. We're coming, amen, from Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And I'm only going to look at one verse. I normally don't do this. I like to read, amen, to see what the context of the scripture is basically talking about. But today, I'm just going to go with Mark 11, 22. I'm just only going to read one verse because we want to zero in on this because this seemed to be a problem with many of the believers, many of the, 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 the uh, believers of the faith, amen. We're losing faith. We're losing confidence in God. Amen. We, we, we feel like the world is closing in on us and we're saying, where is God? Well, God is right there. God is right there. Amen. And God is so big. I don't mean fat like me, but God is so big. If he would move, he would bump into himself. He fills all the heaven and the earth. Amen. When you wake up, God is there. When you go to sleep, God is there. Amen. When you get in your car and you drive, God is there. Praise God. When you when you when you go down to work, Amen. God is there. Paul, it was that David said, "If I make my bed in hell, God is there." Amen. God feels everything. Praise God. We're gonna go to Mark eleven twenty two, and the King James version says, "And Jesus answered unto them, or Jesus said unto them, He's talking to his disciples. He said, Have faith." In God. Have faith in God. That's all we want to talk about. Is have faith in God. 
And, and, and my brothers and sisters, I look at many of us, and we're in a terrible condition today in this walk, in this life. We're, we're in a terrible condition because our focus is more so on our circumstances and what is going on around us in this world. But I'm here to tell you, you've got to get your focus off of what's going on, off of what's happening around you. You've got to get your focus on God. The Bible says over there in Isaiah, the Bible says, praise the Lord, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And we have to believe that. Minister out to either we believe that or we don't believe it. Either we believe the word or we don't believe the word. It's just like the sacrifice that Jesus sacrificed on when he was sacrificed on that cross. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. I did not witness that with my own eyes, but I believe it. I don't have no proof of what the Bible is saying. Amen. It's, it's actually accurate. I, I, I have no proof, but I believe it by faith. I don't, I don't quite have the total, amen, 100% the gist of, amen, the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got to go? Amen. We love you, my brother. I need to get your phone number, too. Because I'm going to call you. I got a new, a new phone. Okay, you got a new phone. Well, the I new number with Bishop Baby. I got to get a new one. You got to get a new one. Okay. Okay. Get it, because we got to keep in touch with you. All right. Love you, man. Love you. And thank you for the offering. Praise God. We, 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 we've got to get to that place, amen, in our lives. Praise God. Amen. That we just trust God and trust him fully and trust him all the way. Amen. Praise God. And nothing, nothing shall separate us in thought, in mind, and in spirit that God is there. Amen. And God is there to take care of you and to take care of me. We were just listening to James Moore before we began the service. Amen. God will take care of you. If you can find that song on YouTube by James, Reverend James Moore, praise God. You ought to listen to that. It'll bring tears to your eyes. He was so anointed. Amen. The late Reverend Moore, when he sang that song, God will take care of you. And you have to believe that in your mind. You've got to believe that in your heart. You've got to believe that by faith that God is taking care of you. If you look back from where he brought you from, you know God was taking care of you. I don't care how many obstacles and things you went through, how many ups and downs you went through, God was yet there taking good care of you. If you believe in somebody, ought to say amen. When you look at those brothers, when Jesus told them, let us go to the other side, amen, and they got in the ship, he did not tell them there was going to be a storm. He didn't tell them a Eurachidon storm was going, to, was going to come up in the midst between, amen, point A and point B. But praise God, when they got in the boat and they was going from point A to point B, a storm arose in the midst of their travel. And they began to panic. But Jesus, if you look at his example, Oh, God, if you would just look at his example, the Bible says he was in the hinder part of the boat and he was asleep in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the boat, just rocking and reeling, amen, in the midst of the boat, being filled with water to the, amen, was about to sink. Jesus was down in the hinder part of the boat, sleep. And I know water got on him. I know his pillow was wet. I know his sheets was wet, his covers or whatever. He, I know his clothes was wet. Because he was down in the bottom. And the boat was feeling with water. There's no way he couldn't feel the water. That cold, that ice cold water. But it didn't even shake him. It didn't even wake him up. Praise God. And that's how we have to do when we're in the midst of storms. When we're going through things in life. When we're headed down a path that we know God has sent us down that path. But yet, it, it, it seems like it couldn't have been God because we hit a Eurachidon storm. We hit an obstacle. This can't be God. But I stop by to tell you, have faith in God no matter what you hit on your way, on your journey. Amen. No matter what tries to slow you down, what is God allowing it or the devil? Amen. You just keep going, keep rowing in your boat. If it's filling up water, get you some buckets, throw the water out and keep going. In Jesus' name. And don't you stop. 
Don't you stop. There are many times I wanted to give up. There are many times I threw my hands up and I said, I'm done. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I was in one marriage, praise God, and I had got so fed up, I took a whole bottle of, uh, of IV perfumes. I think there were 500 each. And it had to have been over 20 or 30 pills down in that bottle. I took all of them, just turned it up. Lock the bathroom door. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't show no sign because I wasn't looking for nobody to try to rescue me. I wasn't looking for none of that. I turned it up, got me some water. Amen. I drunk the water, praise God, and swallowed as many as I could swallow. And they, I, I, they said I was laid out in the floor of the room when they came in there and, and looking for me. And, and let me tell you this, in the midst of that storm, God was taking care of me because he sent Auntie Paula Jones. I don't know if y'all remember the late Dr. P.J. Jones. His wife sent Auntie Paula Jones all the way from 119th and Bell Haven, all the way over to Atlantic and Macmillan in the city of Linwood, amen, to come see about me. She said, you know what? I felt I just needed to come and see Elder. That's when I was just Elder Flowers. I need to see my Elder. Where he at? And the wife said, well, he's in there taking a bath. She sat there for a few minutes. He said, no, I feel a little uneasy. Can you go and tell him I'm here? And Eric, I ain't going to say who it was. She, and the wife went and knocked on the door, praise God, and I didn't even answer. And then they said, Paula said she got a butter knife. Give me a butter knife. And pried the door open, and I'm laying out there in the floor, blue. Blue. Turning black. On my way out of here. Because I was tired. I got tired of the storm. I got tired of fighting. I got tired. And sometimes you will get tired. You get, will get weary. But I'm here to tell you, suicide is not the answer. If you are contemplating suicide out there, that is not the answer. I know you want to get rid of the pain. I know you're tired of the pain. I feel you because I was there. I tried to get rid of the pain that way. But I'm here to tell you, that is not the way. And I knew God was there. I knew he was taking care of me because he could have let me lay there and die and die in my sin of murder. Because I would have murdered myself and I would have bust hell wide open. And I would have been in so much more pain because I'm here to tell you that, brother, the last word we got from hell was, please tell my brothers not to come to this place. The last word we got from hell was, I am tormented in these flames. Now, I thought this little worldly torment was something, but my God, if you go to hell, you're going to be tormented for all eternity. You're going to be tormented forever. It's going to be a pain you can't take no pills. It's going to be a pain where you can't even get a drink of water. It's going to be a pain that you can't escape. So I'm here, to, I'm here to tell you, if you're thinking about committing suicide over pain, you're thinking about committing suicide, amen, over situations and trials and tribulations, the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, somebody ought to say joy, joy cometh in the morning. You're only going through a season of trials and tribulations. And read your Bible, because the Bible tells you, man is born of a woman in a few days and full of trouble. That's why you can't listen to these faith and, and prosperity preachers that tell you you shouldn't have no problems. You should never go broke. You should never have a, your car break down. That stuff is a fallacy. That's a lie. As soon as something happens, you're ready to give up. You're ready to throw in a towel. You're ready to, amen, kill yourself. Take a gun and just pull the trigger. But I'm here to tell you, God will put some blanks in the gun when you thought it was going to kill you. And God will sustain your life because there's a purpose and a plan for your life. Everybody listening to me right now, there is a purpose and a plan for your life. And all the way you can understand that perfect plan for your life is to have faith in God. You're not going to get the answer all the time right away. You're not going to always, amen, receive an answer just like a, a snap of the finger. 
You gotta wait before the Lord. Sometimes you gotta wait upon God. Sometimes you gotta wait upon Him to Amen. Amen. Lay out the plan of your life and explain it to you explicitly. Amen. But sometimes you gotta wait before the Lord. And that's a problem with many of us. We don't want to wait. We want to microwave God. Well, we just turn it on and it's gonna microwave in five minutes. I need to know right now. Right now, I need to know. Sometimes you just need to get somewhere and steal away and pray and seek God. Sometimes you got to turn your plate over and fast and seek God. I know we don't want to do that because that's that's inconvenient. Well, the Bible says, amen, to die daily and take up your cross. That's inconvenient. Don't you know carrying a big old heavy cross is inconvenient? And it was so heavy, somebody had to help Jesus carry his cross. If you believe in somebody, say amen. This gospel is, an, is, is inconvenient to this flesh. It's inconvenient. We think one way and God is thinking another way. Inconvenient. But I'm here to tell you, be patient before the Lord and have faith in him. Bishop Baber, sometimes I wonder why many of us come to church. We do all this dancing. We do all this singing. We we do praise and worship for two hours, and then we get out of here, and something come up, and then what did our faith and went out the window? All that dancing, all that he kind of all that stuff we do, and then soon as something go wrong or something ain't the way we think it should be, our faith and went out the window. We begin we begin to trip, just like Jesus was in the boat with the disciples. It wasn't like they were by themselves and had to call upon the Lord. He was in the boat with them. And he was sleeping in the midst of a mess. That's what you ought to do. Sometimes you ought to just go home. You turn it down a little bit. You just go home, amen, and just get in your bed and go to sleep. And just say, Lord, I leave it in your hand. God, I pray that you make a way out of no way and lay down and go to sleep. And just have peace in God. And stop all this whining. Stop all this crying. Stop all this walking around like you're depressed. Like you, 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 you know, you're ready to die. I know it gets hard. Believe me. Especially if you lose everything. Especially if you lose your job. And you know, there are other jobs out there. That ain't the only job. Man, I'm about to lose this. I'm about to lose it. And what a time right now, because if you lost them, they got all this money they'll pay your rent for six or seven months. Right now, if you that third stimulus, if you is out there and you can't pay your rent, go to do the work and go look it up, look it up, and you can get your rent paid up for six months. Free money, you ain't never got to pay it back. Now, I'm serious. And then you got free internet, 50% 50, 50 off your internet, all that stuff if you're going through something. This is a perfect time to go through something right now because they're giving away money off. But y'all better quit all this PPP loan and you really ain't got no, no legit business. The PPP loan is a payroll uh, protection plan. That's what that means. And you're supposed to be paying your employees when your business is about to go under. Now don't get caught up in the government and thinking they dumb and they stupid and they don't, you know, and you get caught up and they start looking for that money. And then you're going to tell my where is God? No, where was God at when you were stealing that money? Now, y'all y'all better watch that now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play around with that PPP stuff. But the stimulus to get your rent paid, if you, you show them and prove to you that you're behind in your rent, don't you know that they would pay your rent up to six months and then they would extend it if they have to? There's no excuse here in America. No excuse. You can have faith in God and rise above your problems. It's just like cream on top of coffee. You pour it down there and it just rises onto the top. And I'm here to tell you, all you got to do is have faith in God. Where is your faith? James Cleveland asked that question when he wrote that song, where is your faith in God? Where's your faith? You're crying. You're going through the midnight 
Amen. Oh, I'm burning the midnight oil. I'm crying and tossing and turning. And sometimes it's okay to cry. Because the Bible says God will bottle up your tears. But it's going to come a time when you got to stop crying and begin to walk in faith. You got to walk in what you believe in. Do you really believe that there is a God? I don't believe some people believe that God is there. Somebody asked a brother, King Jai, you know, he's a little off. You know, he, he got this this uh, this syndicated podcast, King Jai, live. I know some of y'all know him. And a lady asked him Friday night. I was listening to them Friday night at work. And the lady asked the question. She said, now, King, because a man, a bishop was coming there to the church and was going to put the pastor out because he sold the church without, you know, going through the proper channels of the Church of God in Christ. When when the church, the national church owns that building, you can't just get up and just sell it and reorganize. You got to go through the proper channels. So this brother here, uh, uh, Ella White, was going to sell the church out there. And here come Bishop Green. Amen. And, and he shut the service down at 11 o'clock service. And, and, and somebody said, well, 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 Jai, let me ask you a question. If you built a $2 million church and God told you to get up and walk away from it and just let the national church have it, amen, would you do that? And God said, leave it, and he's going to bless you, and he's going to take care of you. Would you do it? And he took him like 30 seconds to think. He said, hmm. And you know what he came out and said? No, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> God would have to come. But now God came down with his voice like he did with Adam. And the girl asked him, if God spoke to you and told you, and you know it's God, leave that alone. I've got something better for you. Let them have it. Would you do it? I don't think I can do that. You see, because we don't trust God. We trust ourselves more than we trust God. And we definitely shouldn't trust ourselves. But we trust ourselves, we trust family, we trust our job, we trust all this stuff. I need you to turn it off. But we don't trust God. We've got to trust God 101%. Amen. And it's a simple faith walk. You walk by faith and not by sight. It's like you're walking blind. And you're walking out there with, even without a, 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 a blind walking stick. you just walking. Because you know God is there. You know God is going to lead your path. You know God is going to take care of you. Divorce. Uh, broken friendships. You lost your job. Amen. You lost your house. An apartment. A car. Somebody hit. You didn't have insurance. Have faith in God. Because God will take care of you. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what your mind try to tell you. Paul asked the question, is there anything that can separate us from the love of God? And he went down and called the road. And he ended up saying nothing, not even death, shall separate us from the love of God. If you're more than a conqueror, if you're really in him. Because like King John said, no, if God himself, I said, I, I could give up. If I spend a million dollars on a building, I ain't going to give it up. Where's your faith? I'm like James Clinton. Where is your faith in God? We'd rather fight the bishop, fight this, and fight the board, instead of and, and moving on to God, say, well, we ready to fight. Come on, we're going to fight. And you're going to die fighting when God could have blessed you and you would have been sitting pretty Somewhere else, doing his will, because that church ain't your church no way. It belongs to God. That's the problem we got right now. For we think these are our shrines or something. It don't belong to you no way. It's God's house. And if he told you to move out of it, move on out of it. Leave it alone. I don't care how many millions of dollars you put in it. Get out. Jesus came in the temple and whipped some people out. I know some of them put some money in the building. He put them out. Where is your faith in God? Mark eleven twenty two. When you get a chance, read that entire Mark the eleven chapter. It's a beautiful faith chapter. And verse twenty two says, 
Jesus answered and said unto his disciples, have faith in God. It's just that simple. It may not be that simple to the mind, but to your heart, it ought to be just that simple. Because you know God is there. You know God has got you. You always hear these people say, God got me. Some of them he ain't got. <laughs> some, of them, some of them he, I'm going to be honest with you. Some of them folk, God ain't got them no more than the man on the moon got them. But if you loving God, he said, I will not uphold no good thing from them that walk up right before me. God meant just what he said. If you've taken on his righteousness in exchange for the filthy rags of our own righteousness, God meant what he said. I don't have no proof. Uh, I'm saved. I don't have no proof he saved me. But I believe in my faith because I'm saved by grace through faith alone in Christ. It's a faith walk. I just believe it. I don't know. I don't have no proof of his blood. I didn't take no, I didn't take no pictures of it when he was on the cross. Nobody got no pictures of him hanging on the cross. There's not a picture nowhere you can find. If you find one, uh, it's somebody that made one up in the imagination of mind. Nobody was no cameras then. He ain't took no picture of him hanging up on the cross. But I believe it by faith. You got to you got to stand on your faith. You got to stand on the word of God and the word alone. It's just that it's just it's just what it is. So come on. Shake the dust from yourself. Get up from where you are. And let God take you from right where you are. And bring you into his peace. Bring you into his prosperity. Bring you into a new life. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Let him bring you in. But you know what he said? Here comes the inconvenient part, Bishop. You got to take my yoke upon you. You know what a yoke is. Yoke is a, a heavy piece of wood that God's an oxen in, in the ass. Amen. That yoke is heavy, but it's there to guide you like it guides the oxen. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. You've got to get in the word. You've got to hear the word. You've got to read the word. You've got to study and pray. Learn of me. And he says, man, I will give you rest. Woo. You ought to share this video right now. Somebody's going through it. Share. Share this video. Come on. Click the share button. It won't cost you a dime to share this video. Click the like button. I encourage somebody today to just lift up both hands and just say, yes, Lord. I understand what Bishop Basin was when he said, lift up both hands and say, yes, Lord, I understand it. That means I give up. I surrender. I, I surrender everything. Without saying a whole lot of words, it's just two words, yes, Lord. I don't have to come up here and make up a whole lot of prayer and be, you know, verbose and talk, make a whole lot of words. Just lift up both hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. That means yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord. Take my life. Do whatever you want. Yes, Lord. And when you lift them up, lift them hands up in faith and believe God that he's going to take care of you. And I ask you a question. Where is your faith in God? Abraham, and I'm closing with this. He was a friend of God. And guess what? He was going to sacrifice his son on Mount Moriah. He couldn't have told his wife because his wife would have followed him. and told him, you ain't taking my son up there and sacrifice myself. I don't care what God told her. I know she probably would have told him. But Sarah, even though she loved God, she wasn't going to let that boy go up there and let his father take out a knife and sacrifice him up on that hill. But you know what he said, but Bishop, when he was at the bottom of the, of the mountain and his servants and those that were there to help them bring everything needed for the sacrifice, he said, the lad and I are going up to worship and we'll be back down. Oh my God. When God had already told him, I want you to sacrifice, I want you to kill your son. How did he know God was going to have a ram in the bush? God didn't say, I'm going to have a ram over there. He had to walk up that hill by faith, but he believed God that if I take my child, my, my only son, and I take him up there, I just don't believe God going to let me kill him. 
He said we in the last one will both be back down. So just wait right here. That's faith. And he took the knife with him. He had it ready. He had that knife ready to, to jab his son. And when he lifted the knife up, God said, hold on a minute. I know you believe me. I know you trust me. Don't lay not one hand on your son. I've got a sacrifice in the bush. Even the lad said, Dad, where's the sacrifice at? Because he didn't know what was going on either. Don't worry, my son, God will provide. Isn't that something? And you might, you might think that's a fairy tale. That ain't no fairy tale. I believe that really happened. Because I believe the Bible. I trust what I read. And you have to trust what you read. If God did it for Abraham, why can he not do it for you? Why can he not do it for me? But you know what it takes? Trust. Blind faith. Just trust it. Just walk and know me looking to the left and the right. Just look straight ahead. And know that God is with you and he's guiding you. He's taking you on a journey. So again, I say to you, have faith in God. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for your prayers. This ministry needs your prayers. Jesus is the answer. Evangelistic Ministries Church needs your prayers. Bishop Flowers needs your prayers. This jurisdiction, follow me as I follow Christ, and our presiding prelate, Bishop Willie J. Baber Jr., we need your prayers. I solicit your prayers. I beg of thee to pray. Because this ministry is going somewhere. It may look bleak right now, but I don't care what it looks like. I know what God showed me while I was laying down there in the Lano State Reception Center, laying there, and he showed me J-I-A. It was a Cuban gentleman down there at Pitcher's Honor Ranch, over there down the street from Magic Mountain, in the county jail, came to me, and he sat at the end of my bed and couldn't talk no English, and he had to call somebody, he had to, 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 to interpret. And he says, man, he began to ask, first he asked me questions about different things about my life and he confirmed it was me. Then he says, you have a ministry, amen, and you don't have, we, we can't even count how many people. And I'm not interested in being popular or having thousands and thousands of people. I'm only here to do the will of the Lord. Whatever the will is or the Lord is, that's what I'm going to do. But this man can speak no English. He didn't know me from, from Jack in the Box. But he told me some things about my life and then he prophesied. And I just pray that I didn't miss the mark doing all that foolishness I was doing out there in the day. I pray I didn't miss the mark. I pray it's not too late, but I'm going to keep on walking in that vision. I'm going to keep on walking on that prophecy. No matter how I look. Because I have faith in God. Now I'm here to tell you, my brother and my sister, have faith in God no matter what. Everything is going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Just trust God. Trust him. Trust him. When I get a musician, I, that's, that my theme song is going to be trust him. Same one that Bishop Robert W. McMurray used to sing before he, he mount the pulpit. I'm going to sing that song until I die. Trust him. Because this is what this, this whole thing with walk is all about. Trusting God. We have to trust him. There's no other way. We can't figure him out. You can't get no semantics and try to draw some, some, some diagrams on a chalkboard and try to, you can't figure out God. You can't. You got to just trust him and believe him by faith. Believe his word by faith. That's what's going to sustain you. That's what's going to carry you through. I love you. Uh, we're closing. Please, if you would like prayer, please call 562-208-9149. If I said it too fast, this, the phone number is going to come up on the screen. You can press pause and write that information down and give us a call. Also, our address, 5904 South San Pedro, Los Angeles, California, 9003 is our zip code. If you would pause the screens once that information come up, write it down, write us, write us. If you disagree with something, write me and we try to reason one another. I don't, you know, I don't think I know it all. Praise God, write me. Praise God, if you want to send a check money order, if you would like to send us Zale, 
If you'd like to uh, uh, cash app us, you can do all that information is going to come up on that screen. Amen. I just want you to pause it and write it down. Amen. When you hear the theme song, come on, just look for that information and you can write that down. Amen. And uh, send us prayer requests, send us an offering, whatever you want to send, or you can dial that number and we'll be glad to speak with you because we love you with the love of the Lord. For God so loved the Lord world, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We are the same. We love you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. And amen. As I get ready to close, as I always say, as we close out, remember this one thing. Don't you be caught dead without Jesus. God bless you, and we'll see you, amen, again next Sunday if the Lord, amen, permits and wills us. God bless you. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Oh, uh -huh.